So as you can see, this part of the lesson adds going to the next song automatically. And if it happens to be the last song on the list, it'll shoot to the first song automatically. And adding stop button to make the sound stop altogether. Hello everybody, Adam of Flash Building here. We're continuing our ActionScript 3 MP3 XML playlist player here in part 4. And this player is totally awesome. And I'm made up of nothing but sound vibrations. I'm very in touch with sound. And that's how I know so much about sound programming in ActionScript 3. It's because of the universe I'm from. Okay, since we're staying real smart and tackling the project in phases, we have part 1, 2, and 3 going so far. And they correspond to the videos that are 1, 2, and 3 on my channel. And the source files are also available at developphp.com. So I'm going to take part 3, copy, and paste, and move on to part 4. And it's a good way to work like this sometimes if you're making a complex applications that way if at any part of the process you make a boo-boo make a happy little accident you can go back and delete the current one you're working on and revert to the last one you were working on that was all working nice so let's uh, rename this pop full that's what I'm going to do alright now you dig into that file let's open it Actually, let's just rename this. Rename part four. Let's delete that because the new one's going to be created when we press F12 to render out all the files. Now we're ready. Let's double click it. Let's rock and roll. What we're going to do in this lesson is add the stop button because I noticed that you cannot stop the player. And on the page of develop PHP, it's kind of annoying, so I gotta add the stop button now. We're gonna understand how to add the stop button. It's gonna be really, really easy. And we're also gonna program in when one song finishes, it's gonna automatically move on to the next song and start playing it and highlight that cell. Pretty cool stuff. So you wanna know this, come on. Okay, first thing to do is highlight our my whole player clip that's on the scene one and double click inside of it. There's our list component and all the action script that powers the application. And we're going to put action script on frame 3 for the stop button. But first, we have to put, and I renamed where it said list here to player stuff. So this layer is called player stuff now instead of just list because we're going to have more than just the list component sitting there. So on that layer, let's go to window, common libraries, buttons, and I'm going to grab out the uh, pre-made rounded gray stop button. I'm going to put it on stage. Now once it's out on stage and these buttons are already set up with over, out, and down effects. So you know it's nice and easy to use those. You can make your own custom buttons. Design them. Okay so that has an instance name that we've given it of stop underscore btn. This has an instance name of list remember? This has instance name of stop underscore btn. Now we can communicate to that button through code. So let's highlight frame 3, press F9 to open the actions panel. And let's put in a couple of lines here, a couple of dashes, slashes rather, forward slashes. Those lines will be skipped at runtime, so you don't have to worry about it, but it's a good visual separator for your eyeballs. Okay, so let's go here and let's give ourselves a comment say stop button listener and we're also going to need a stop button function that easy so let's go ahead and grab this listener here control C control V and let's put the correct instance name of the item we want to control this function so stop BTN has an event listener now and it's not a change event this is going to be a mouse event of click so we also have to change this to mouse event and we're going to name it stop player make it make good sense to us so we don't get confused so now all we need is our little function so stop underscore BTN has an event listener now it's a mouse event, click, and what it does is fire up a function called stop player whenever that button is clicked now. So we need a stop player function. 
So let's just grab this function beginning. Change the name on the function to stop player and make sure this says mouse event. So let's copy that. Event is mouse event. Colon void. And let's close off the curly brace. Now we have our function as set up. This is very simple. We just type in channel dot stop. That's it. That will stop the player. Now you play your stop button's all done. Let's go ahead right here and put some more visual separators because under that we're gonna have more functionality for creating the next track play functionality. When one track gets done playing, we want to make sure see stops the player no matter what song it's on it's beautiful now uh... yeah so now we gotta code in the part where when one song is playing and it gets finished it has to automatically change to the next song in the list and highlight that cell start playing that song that's what we do now okay let's highlight frame three click F9 open the actions panel let's go down let's give ourselves another comment here and we're going to call this event listener for sound complete when any song finishes that's good and the function on sound complete all right now all we need is a listener so let's just let's just go ahead and grab all this here that was powering the stop button let's grab that listener pop it in let's grab the function pop it in we're gonna change it up now the function is going to be just event not mouse event and this is going to be sound complete underscore complete and the name of the function is going to be on sound complete oh, I named it in sound <laughs> so on sound complete or let's name it on complete playback I think that's the more common used name for that and right here function on complete playback oh, let's make sure this is just event and not mouse event there we go now we're all set up to where oh no the channel has to be tied to that so channel dot add event listener event is sound complete we run the on complete playback function that's right here inside of that on complete playback function we're gonna type in new track and what this is doing is referring to a function that we're going to create right here. Let's call this function new track. Now, so every time any song gets finished playing, it's going to run this function on com on play uh, on complete playback, and then this function called new track is going to fire off and we're going to set that function up right now it's not very difficult okay so to save a little time I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in and here's what we have lines 31 through 50 were just added in and it's called function new track just like I said we were going to call it and it's fired off or it's executed inside of this on complete playback function so each time a sound gets finished on complete playback is going to command this new track function here to begin or to execute so anytime a sound completes this new track function executes and the reason why I just didn't take all of this code and stick it in the on complete playback function is because I might want to use this new track function for another part of the players functionality so I can reuse this function I don't have to create another one that does similar things so now let's explain what's going on inside of the function 
So here's everything that happens inside of the new track function. And there's an if and else condition statement you'll see here. Let's pull this back where it belongs. There's an if and else condition. And in the first part of the if condition, we were saying if the list dot selected item song number and remember song number is claimed in each individual cell right here see song num song num has a value of i which is the iterator in this xml loop so we say list dot selected item song num is equal if the selected cell song number is equal to whatever the total track amount is for your player if you have 20 songs this i is going to be a 20 so if the song this current song num is equal to 20 you want to go back to song 1 you don't want to go to song 21 cuz song 21 is not there so this code here takes care of that now we set up the else part of the condition statement to account for if we do need to go to the next song say if we're on song if we have a list of 20 and we're on song 12 we definitely want it to go to song 13 to play the next in the list and not back to song 1 so this handles going back to song 1 if this certain condition is met and else we just go ahead and go to the next song in the list and play that one so let, let me explain what's in this first part here this one two three four five lines if the song num is the last song in the list we stop the channel then we claim a variable it's a new array of select first similar to what we did in the first frame to make that first list component cell highlighted by default we're gonna highlight that first list item again because we know we're gonna be playing song one then we say list that select indices which is the way to highlight the item automatically select first so we just highlight song one there that cell in the list and it's going to be track to play is now going to be set to equal to list component dot selected item song string which is also defined on frame one each list item each cell in the list each song when clicked carries a certain amount of information that we set into it on frame one remember if you don't go back to watch video one I think it was where we covered that I talked about it very much in depth so we can access song string so track to play when it goes back to frame two it's gonna know track to play which one to access so when one song completes we switch the track to play and then we go to and play frame two which starts the whole player over again when it snaps back to frame 3 with the exact song that we want to play which will be the first one in this case first song in the list now if we want to go to the next song if say we're on song 3 and we wanted to go to song 4 and just keep continuing on through the list this code handles that and what happens is we stop the channel once again and then we claim a variable here of SN and this is a little bit different from this part of the code because this is the list that selected item song num so the song number which was the I remember the increment for each cell so we claim a variable for that here and then we select make a variable called uh, select next which is the array variable for selected indices remember so we collect we say list that selected indices is equal to select next what that's going to do is automatically select the next list in the cell then track to play is defined as list dot selected item dot song string so here we selected the new next song and then we know which track to play by the song string in that selected item it makes good sense then we go to and stop play 2 to make that all happen and play the next song now at the very end here I added always set pause position back to 0 here because we want to have the pause position set to 0 if any song starts anew because we're gonna add a pause button I think okay let's check out the result of our hard work press control and enter to test it 
And let's go to a shorter song. This one's kind of short. And when it ends, if it goes to five, we know all is good. We also want to test. You can't hardly hear it. But... See? Automatically went to the next song. Now, if we go to the last song, when this song ends, it should go back to the first song. Let's check it and see if it does. I should have made these tracks a little shorter. <laughs> and the stop button also works. So everything we set out to do in this lesson is complete. I must prove it. See? There, I proved it to you. That's the new jam playing when that last one in the list finished it shot back to song one now let's press the stop button see everything we set out to do is complete now we'll we'll just continue on we're gonna make this thing awesome I'm gonna show you everything volume sliders what else can we do with the player uh, we can show the the load progress for each song we can make a, a playhead dragger to go anywhere in the song's playhead. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, so there's a lot we can do. So stick around for part five, uh, where we'll continue on with this project. And I guess the next logical thing to do would be to, I'm not even sure yet. We'll wing it. We've been winging it this whole project. Let's just wing it.